Hello guys, it is me, the Tank Index here, and we are jumping back on track for our, you know, World War One section of tank design, and you know, tanks in general, and we're jumping back into American tanks with some early U.S. steam tanks. I know we sort of diverged to talk about some old ass British designs, but you know, I think we should just get back on track for now, and we're gonna have two uh, strange World War One era steam tanks designed by the U.S. So, first of all, we are starting with the steam wheel tank, the prototype vehicle designed by the Colt Manufacturing Company between 1916 and 1917. The prototype was completed by February of 1918. Okay, that is some of the worst spelling I've ever had in my entire life. So, you know, you are welcome for having to witness this. I know, I'm amazing. Um, and it was tested between March and May uh, at Aberdeen Proving Ground. The design in general was not a tadpole configuration, it was a delta configuration. So essentially you would have um, two thick back wheels that would support the brunt of it and then a, a front one mainly for steering. Holt executives at the trial said it would drive like a conventional agricultural tractor. So basically those big tractors you see, you know, like farm books that have like the tr three tricycle wheels that are like stereotypical, you know, the big green tractor, that's what this would be. Um, its two back driving wheels were 8 feet in diameter and 3 feet wide, while a front roller with a 4 foot diameter sat at the front to, you know, cut, sort of steer the vehicle. A small, plant was all, a small plate was also by the roller, as you can see here, um, right here, which would be for crossing trenches, um, which is actually a pretty interesting way to, you know, make sides for trench crossing. Um, it had two 75 horsepower steam engines and a kerosene fire boiler, which would make conditions very hot and humid and basically unbearable. Um, it would also have two six pounder guns on side sponsors and two machine guns. Theoretically, I'm guessing this right here would be the machine guns and this would be the sponsor or maybe reverse, I'm not sure. And it would have riveted armor plating from six to five millimeter in thickness. Now onto the US Engineer Corps steam tank. It was an early 19 tank design basically mimicking the Mark IV but with steam as you can see it is a Mark IV. Um, it was designed by US Army Engineer Corps officer. I do not know his name but it is one of those officers. The program was kickstarted by General John A. Johnson and had expertise by a prominent steam car manufacturer called the Stanley Motor Carriage Company from Massachusetts. Two bankers from Boston financed the entire project, which was $60,000 at the time, or $1,019,900 today. As you can imagine, that is insanely expensive. Only one was ever made, and it was demonstrated in April 1918, participating in several parades, but very embarrassing it must have been when at one of the parades, this thing broke down right in front of the public. Yeah, that's sort of sad. Um... A prototype was sent to France in June and was named America, of course it was, and it had a lot of publicity to boost morale, but it wasn't liked by the Frenchman, probably because of the insane steam power it had. Onto the statistics of this thing, it would have two boilers powering the tracks, and you know, being the engines, and steam was cho chosen specifically to power the main weapon of a flamethrower. Yes, this was designed as a bunker-busting flame tank that would destroy pillboxes. Um, how useful that would be instead of just cannons that could destroy a whole bunch of other things, I don't know. The maximum speed it could reach was 4 miles an hour, which is pretty normal for that time. A flamethrower in the front could reach out 90 feet, which is a big range, and there were 4.30 caliber machine guns as well. Each track frame had mud clearing spikes on the front, which a lot of people think is a ram. It is not, that would be ridiculous. Um, it was a giant 50 tons compared to the Mark IV's 28 or 27 ton weights, depending on if it was a male or female model. There'd be a commander, gunner, mechanic, flamethrower operator, and four machine gunners. Once sent to France, the flamethrower nozzle was moved onto a revolving turret on the roof of the tank in the front, instead of they just a, you know, still gun mantlet. Um, but as you can imagine, conditions inside this tank would be even worse than normal tanks. Which moves me on to my final assessments. The two steam, U.S. steam tanks are very interesting designs. Um, the steam wheel tank is essentially an attempt at American innovation and a new spin on the tank concept. Meanwhile, the engineer core steam tanks was essentially just a Mark IV, but with the engine changed to support a flamethrower capable of conquering all pillboxes in its path. 
However, steam turned out to just not be a fuel, good fuel source for these massive vehicles. It just was not a good idea for the engine to be sea powered. Tank conditions were already awful and full of CO2 poisoning at the time and would honestly remain that way until World War II, where it was largely changed to prevent such, you know, poisonings for the crew. Hot and humid steam didn't help that. A flamethrower also just wasn't needed at the time. I mean, as infantry could do the job just as well instead of a tank. Uh, honestly, if you're going to build a tank, until the production of World War II, your tank might as well be capable of shooting things, not just having a specific task like that. The failure of steam power for tanks in general led to these tanks being tossed away as just strange concepts. Even though at the idea at the time the idea seemed so sound, you know, uh, hindsight is always twenty twenty. Though, hope you enjoyed the video. Next week I will be finishing up American tank design, I believe, with two more concepts or maybe three. Uh, and I will see you all later. Goodbye.